P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Say, is the post cereal shelf pretty well filled at your house? If not, you'd better tell your mom so she can do something about it, buckaroos. Post cereals are good. You can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. And a fellow should have them handy all the time. Well, sir, I hear another young couple who bought that little ranch from Artie Kerner's having trouble. Seems like nobody can make a go of that place. <laughs> No. You can't buy back this place, Mr. Kerner. Not now or ever. Well, now, John, I know you're having trouble. I, I thought I might help you out if I... I don't care what you thought. This ranch isn't for sale, especially at half the price I paid you for well, it. Now, let's be calm. The only reason I came here was to do you a kindness. Why, well, you stand to lose everything unless I... I don't want your kindness. Now, get out. John. No. What? May I say something? Sure, go ahead. Well, maybe Mr. Kern is right. Yeah, you see. Keep out of this. My wife is talking to me. We are at the end of our rope. We can't go on. Wouldn't it be better to save half our investments than to lose everything? We worked hard for our money and to lose it all now. Your we... wife is right, John. I'm just being neighborly, that's all. You, you take what you can. You take yourself out of here. No, 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 no. Don't be hasty. Right now. John. Do you hear me? Uh, very well. <clears throat> That's the way you feel? That's the way I feel. Oh, John, you're wrong. Yes, a month or two months from now, you'll be coming to me on your knees. I doubt that. I won't be of a mind to give you anywhere near as much then. <laughs> I may not even want your ranch. It's Mrs. Kennedy I feel sorry for. Her, her future isn't very bright. That sniveling cheat. He knows we're in a spot. He thinks he can take advantage of us because... Irma, where are you going? I, I don't know exactly, John. Oh, now, now, wait a minute. You can't leave me. It isn't because of the bad luck we've had, John. I, I'd stick with you if all our cattle had died, if we'd lost everything. But when your stubbornness keeps you from doing what you know is best... You're leaving here. Is that it? All right. Well, maybe I am stubborn, Irma. But if I am, it's because I won't let a man beat me when I'm down. I just won't. John Kennedy surveys the little ranch that was to mean so much to himself and his wife. The cattle have died one after another of some mysterious ailment. Their hard-earned money is gone. And now John is alone without his wife. He corrals the few cattle that are left, deciding he'll save what little he has. He feeds them the best of food by hand. Next morning, he goes outside. Five more are dying. John mounts his horse and races toward town for the veterinarian. An hour later, Roy and Jonah are in the Eureka Cafe having dinner and talking with Dale. A shot is heard outside in the street. What's all that? What was that? Why, it sounds like Custer's last stand in a small way. Hey, Roy, somebody's after Arthur Kearney. Open the door, Jonah, quick, let him in. Well, convolution. Is that the gunman there riding away? It could be. Let me in, let me in. Oh, Roy, I was almost killed. Somebody missed you, eh? Yeah, the fella must have been an awful bad shot. You ain't even got one hole in your hide. Oh, Roy, Jonah, stop kidding him. This is serious. Who did it, Colonel? Well, oh, I'm glad you folks saw what happened. If I decide to take John Kennedy to court, you can testify on my behalf. We didn't see the shooting. Is John Kennedy the man who shot at you? I was just trying to be kind. I, I oh. knew he'd had bad luck with the little range I sold him, so I went out the other night and I offered to buy it back. Mm. And he refused, and I approached him again just now. I think he might have changed his mind. You've bought and sold that little ranch a half a dozen times in the last six years. 
It prospers as long as it's in your hands. But the minute a new owner gets it, his cattle start dying. Now, Roger. Uh, then you buy the ranch back for half the price you sold it for, and the whole thing starts over again. Now, you're insinuating things you can't prove. John's cattle have been dying, too, since he bought the place, haven't they? Oh, yes, yes, they have, but it's no fault of mine. Colonel, what would you say if I told you I took over that ranch a couple of days ago? You? Yeah, you're joking, Roger. Am I? Why, what would you want with it? Uh, I'll check with the county land office and see if your deed has been recorded. Oh, yes, I'll go right now. Go well, right ahead. Well, I certainly will. Mm. I don't believe a word of it. That fellow's a mess, Roy. A pure, unadulterated mess. Uh, oh, now, wait a minute, Dale. That's an insult to the Army to call him a mess. When did you make a deal with John Kennedy, Roy? I didn't say I had. I just asked Kerner what he'd do if I had. Oh, that's it. Uh, maybe I will, though. You two like to ride out there with me? John ought to be home by the time we arrive. I'll not sell my ranch to anybody. I'll still hang on if every animal I got dies. You're new to this territory, John. You just couldn't have known the history of this place. And nobody thought to tell me. You didn't give them a chance. Oh, well, maybe. I guess I thought I was getting a bargain. John... There's something mighty odd about the mysterious ailment cattle get on this ranch and nowhere else. It's not mysterious anymore. Just wasting my time. Maybe. I found out what's killing them. Loco weed. What? Well, I haven't seen any local weed around here for several years. I can take you out to the feed pans and show you some. Fresh cut, if you doubt my word. John, how did your cattle act before they died? Why, they were skittery. They'd scare if a leaf blowed across the ground. They'd lift their legs knee high to step over a twig. Sometimes when they put their heads down to drink... They'd miss the tank entirely. Well, it sounds like it. Oh, where do you get your feed? Oh, talk, 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 talk. Raise right. my own feed. But there wasn't any local weed in what I put in the pens. Roy, could the real trouble be Artie Kerner? John, if anybody asks you, I want you to tell them that, well, you've turned your ranch over to me. I ain't selling. Well, you don't have to sell. Just let on that I've taken over and you're working for me. Well, what's the sense of that? Well, it'll give me a chance to pull a little stunt. A stunt that'll help us find out the truth. <laughs> Dale returns to her cafe in Mineral City and for the next 24 hours helps spread word that Roy has taken over the little ranch run by John Kennedy. And these 24 hours are busy ones for Roy and Jonah. They transfer John's ailing cattle to the Double R Bar where there is no loco weed and drive a few of Roy's own cattle to John's ranch where John carefully watches the feed pens. At the end of the 24 hours... Roy and Jonah appear in town for the first time. If I figured right, we should have some action, Jonah, real soon. Mm -hmm. My bet is that it'll come from Artie Kerner. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Don't you feel good? Oh, Roy, by doggies, I'm getting disgusted. Now, I spent three or four hours yesterday deciding to wear my orange necktie instead of the yellow one, and another three or four hours practicing what I'm going to say when she opens the door... She? Eh? Whoa, here. Maybe you'd better start at the beginning. Well, now, Roy, you know I couldn't keep my appointment last night because we had so much work to do. I didn't even know you had an appointment. Well, sure. You know very well I... Uh, oh, say, maybe I forgot to tell you. It, uh, <coughs> it was with the school mom. The... Well, what do you know? Yeah, well, pure business, of course, Roy. She's got the only typewriter in town, so mm -hmm. yesterday morning early, I went over to the boarding house. Oh, let's tie up here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, sir, she come to the door, and she got... You know, Roy, that school mom's a real pretty woman. So I've heard. Yeah, well, pure business, of course. Mm -hmm. And I asked her would she be willing to type this book of mine when I get it read. Yeah. Yeah, the one about the people I've met and the experiences I've had with them. Walk on up to Dale's Cafe. Uh -huh. Well, sir, Roy, she looked out at me from under them long glasses of hers, and she says, <laughs> she says, why, I'd be happy to, Mr. Wilde. Mr. Wilde? <laughs> yeah, says, uh, I didn't know we had a literary man in our midst. <laughs> and then, sir, Roy, she looked out at me from under them long lashes again, and she said, well, Roy, she says, come over any evening at all. So I thought I'd go last night, you see. Hey, wait a minute. Ain't that Artie Kern coming out of the Eureka Cafe now? Yeah. Let's see what he has to say. Yeah, that red that pole cat if I ever seen one. And I have seen one. Well, well, I was just about to ride out to your place, Roy. Is that so? Yes, it's a matter of business we ought to talk over. 
I couldn't find any record at the land office of your taking over Kennedy's ranch. Now, legally, I'm... I'm... Put your conscience at ease, Colonel. We know what has been causing the bad luck out there, and from now on... Yeah, what caused it? You may see an announcement about it in the Mineral City Gazette tomorrow. You wouldn't make a thing like that public. Why not? Uh, Well, I've got to run along. Best of luck to you. Yes, the very best. Oh, I hate you. Yeah, a full-fledged polecat. A three-striper at least. Let's go on into the cafe, Jonah. That will give Kerner a chance to slip out of town. You're going to let him get away, Roy? We'll let him start, then trail him. He'll probably head out to where the local weed's grown and try to destroy it. Say, it's easy to blaze the trail to a better day. Just start off with a rip-snorting breakfast built around new, improved post-toasties. Fresh, crisp flakes of corn, rich with sweet kernel flavor. Yippee! What a feast! Post-toasties, deep, good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Deep, good corn flakes. Post-toasties, deep, good corn flakes. And, Mom, if there's a pale face at your house who hasn't an appetite for breakfast... Try setting a big bowl full of Post Toasties at his place and watch him eat hearty. Remember, Post Toasties with sugar and cream are heap good and heap good nourishment, too, for rockin' horse cowboys or big braves. So be a good scout, Mom. Dish up Post Toasties, the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Keep good corn flakes. Post toasties, keep good corn flakes. Believing R.D. Kerner is guilty of killing John Kennedy's cattle and will fall into the trap that they've set, Roy and Jonah pretend to ignore him. They go into the cafe. Seemingly carefree... Yet they're watching every move he makes. Howdy, Roy. Jonah. Oh, hi, Dale. Hey, looks like we're going to get us a moose. Yeah? How's that? Kerner, he's about to lead us to where the local weed's growing. Good. If he's at fault, he'll have to pay for the cattle he's destroyed, won't he? Oh, say, Roy, I found this a little while ago. It's for you. The sealed envelope? Yeah, it was lying near the cash register. Hmm. I had no idea how it got there. Oh, my gracious. You had me scared for a minute. Thought maybe it was mine. <laughs> They're balling out for missing my appointment last night. Now, Jonah, hmm? a lady who looks out at you from under those long lashes wouldn't ball you out, would she? Hmm. This is a note from John Kennedy's wife. Irma? Yeah. I have something important to tell you, and I need help. I'm staying at Gary Buell's house. And you come there at 2 o'clock today. It's important. Why would Irma Kennedy call for help, Roy? Let me finish. Please don't bring anyone with you and don't ride Trigger. He he would be recognized. Hmm. She certainly makes it sound mysterious. Yeah, well, if you want my opinion, somebody's trying to trick us. What if they're not, though? Jonah, you take Bullet and Trail Kerner. Mm -hmm. I'll go with him, Roy. All right. But just follow him. See what he does and don't tangle with him. I'll get a horse from the livery stable and check on this note. Roy rides to the Gary Buell home a few miles from town, timing himself to arrive at exactly 2 o'clock. He dismounts, looks about. The house seems deserted, foreboding. Roy goes to the front door, warily, and knocks. He waits. Turn around, Roy. I... Well, well, howdy, John. I reckon you're kind of surprised to see me here, aren't you? Yes, I am, to tell you the truth. Uh, I got a note from... From my wife? Yeah, that's right. Uh, she said she needed help. Uh, nothing's greedier than a greedy woman, is there? And nothing's lower than a cheat who pretends friendship. What does that mean? You, Rogers. Maybe you'd better explain yourself. Sure. That wife of mine wanted the ranch for herself. Oh, she worked it pretty. Then she got you to thimble rig me into giving you the deed, and you're to turn it over to her for a couple of hundred dollars. That way, I'll be out in the cold, and you'll... I've heard enough of that foolishness, John. I knew you wouldn't need to have much explaining done, Rogers. Looks as though somebody wanted to cause trouble between you and me, doesn't it? It sure does. Because I got a note saying you were to meet her here and turn over the deed. This is more of Artie Kerner's work. Now, you got an awful glib tongue and some winning ways. I may not be able to lick you, but I can sure try. Cut it out, John. This is what Kerner wants. And it's what I want. 
Colonel got us to meet out here for some reason. Fight, why don't you? Come on, fight, you coward. A man can take just so much, John. I didn't want to do this to you. I'm sorry, John. But maybe if you stay here for a while and see that Irma doesn't come to meet me, you'll cool off a little. Roy turns, walks over to his hired horse, and mounts. He wheels about and rides across country toward the John Kennedy Ranch, thinking Artie Kerner may have gone there and that Dale and Jonah will be on his trail. But the ranch is deserted. There is no sign of Kerner or of Dale and Jonah. Roy rides back to Mineral City again. You an awful long time, Roy. I was looking for you and Dale. Yeah, we've been here all the time. Uh, Colonel didn't leave? No, nope, guess not. He walked down to the livery stable. I followed him that far, and he sat down like he's going to stay all afternoon. What'd you do then? Come back here? Well, yes. I figured it wouldn't do to let Colonel know we was watching him. Any luck, Roy? Yeah, and all of it bad. What happened? Somebody's trying to turn me and John Kennedy against each other. I've been trying to figure out why ever since. Yeah, there he is, Sheriff. <laughs> I knew we'd find him here. It's Artie Kerner. Howdy, Sheriff. Hi, Tin Star. Howdy, folks. I hope you won't let your personal feelings stand in the way of your duty. I'll handle things, Colonel. You keep quiet. Yeah, keep quiet. What's all this about? I happen to be riding by... I said I'd handle things. Yes, yeah. Sound like a steamboat whistle, the voice I came. Uh, Kerner says he was riding a trail over by Gary Buell's old place. He heard a shot. And saw you riding away, Roy. He heard a shot. Yeah, two shots, in fact, and I was quite some distance away. When I got there, I found John Kennedy's body just outside the house. His body? Somebody killed John? If you saw me shoot another man, you should have interfered, Kerner. Well, uh, you were too far away. You were out of range. But you recognized me. It wasn't too far for that, was it? I recognized your horse as you were leaving. It's a pretty well-known fact that nobody rides trigger except me. Roy didn't ride Trigger this afternoon. You lying polecat, what are you up to? Easy, Dale, Jonah. Sheriff, Trigger's been in the livery stable since about one o'clock, and he's still there. Sorry, Roy. He's not. What? But he is. I was just there to get my own horse. Now then, there's just one more piece of evidence. It's this, Roy. Recognize it? Yeah. It's one of the conchos off my saddle. It was found a few feet from where John was lying. Tim Star, I don't care if there is a law officer present. I'm going to Put take... Put that you... gun back, Jonah. Put it back. No, sir. I'm taking Kerner. Put it down. Put it. There. Convolutions and confound you. I don't blame you, Jonah. Kerner, for the sake of your own security, I think you'd better get out of here. Yes, uh, sure, sir. Yes, of course. If I can be of any more help, uh, you just let me know. You ain't going to live that long. Jonah. Yeah. Looks like he's fixed things good. John isn't dead, Roy, even though Kerner believes he is. I had the doc go out and get him. He's taken two bullets out of John. Sheriff, I admit being out to Gary's place and meeting John, I had a fight with him, but there was no shooting. Roy, uh, all I can do is... I'm going to ask you for just one hour of freedom before you lock me up, Sheriff. One hour to prove I didn't shoot John. I give you my word I'll be back. John and I will stay in Roy's place, Sheriff. What are you talking about? When have I ever doubted Roy? His word is always good with me. Thanks, Sheriff. Well, maybe you ain't so bad at that, Tin Star. Come on, we'll get Bullet. He's got to do some trailing for us. Carter's not heading for his own ranch, Roy. He sure ain't, according to Bullet. I think I know where he's gone, but I never believed he'd be such a fool. Roy, that polecat's heading straight for John Kennedy's ranch. He certainly is. He's going to give himself away, Dale, Jonah. Roy, Dale, and Jonah come within sight of the corrals as John Kennedy's ranch and pull up their horses. Hoo-hoo! Oh, oh, the Inside the corrals is Hardy Kerner, beating the cattle, driving them out toward the range. His activity is furious, like that of a demented man seeking revenge. He gets on his horse, wheels it about, and rides toward the little ranch house. What's he going to do now? Watch for a minute. We'll have to take him. Kerner seems literally to have lost his mind. He leaps from his horse, runs to the house, goes inside. Roy, Dale, and Jonah follow, bullet at their heels. They hear the sound of chopping, smashing, something breaking, coming from the house. They go through the door and stop. Kerner is there, his back toward them. Broken furniture, household equipment. 
He has a can of kerosene in his hand. He's pouring it over the debris. He takes a match from his pocket. Kerner! Kerner reaches for his gun. Roy draws. <laughs> Good shot, Roy. I'll pick up his gun, Roy. I have another gun, Rogers. I have another. Stay back! Stay back where you are! You're not taking me! He's as balmy as a bull bat. Don't move, Kerner. Stand quiet. <laughs> You know, the way folks all over the country are going for Post Sugar Crisp, it's got to be good. You bet. Post's wonderful new cereal treat has caused a sensation everywhere. And if you've tried it at your house, you know why. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp really perks up a breakfast menu. It's so delicious. Just add milk or cream and it's ready to serve. No sugar needed. It's already sweet. It makes a perfect snack between meals, too, whenever you crave a special treat. And folks love to carry Post Sugar Crisp right along with them, wherever they go, and eat it like candy right out of the package. It's wholesome wheat for nourishment, and that sugar and honey coating for flavor and quick energy make it a wonderful pickup anytime. Don't just take my word for it. You try it. Get Post Sugar Crisp in the giant or regular size package with the three little bears on the front. <laughs> Bullet crouches at Roy's feet. Kerner stands some ten steps from Roy, his eyes glazed, his cheeks flushed. Dale and Jonah wait, ready. Roy takes a step toward Kerner. Stay away from me, Roger! Roy walks slowly, carefully toward the distraught man, coming nearer, nearer. Kerner backs away into a wall. Roy continues. Kerner's face is alight with fire. Suddenly, panic strikes. He glances about wildly, and Roy springs. I got you! Good work, Roy. Time goes. Stand around here. Let me load. Let me load. That's it. That's better. I'll burn your place to Rogers. I'll get away and I'll destroy your place. Get a rope, Jonah. We'll need it. I've had a good thing here buying and selling this wrench. And you're taking it from me. But I'll get even. I'll get even with you. He's hysterical, Roy. He'll cool off when we get him to town. And that won't be long. now, Roy Dale, but he won't quite believe he admitted everything. I guess the pressure was a little too much for him, Sheriff, uh, when he knew he was going to be caught. Well, we'd better ride out and see if Trigger's at the ranch. He'll be there. He always goes home when he gets loose. Hi, Irma. Oh, I've just been over with John. He's feeling a lot better. Everything's going to be all right between you two again, huh? Oh, yes, Roy. Gee, I'm glad. Well, I was wrong to leave him, and he was wrong to think I wanted to take the ranch away from him. So both of us have something to live down. Well, here comes the author of Paradise Valley. Oh, all right, all right. Make your sneering remarks. But you just wait till you see a great big thick book come out with my name on it. Thick will probably be a good description of any book you write. Mm. Did you see the school teacher, Jonah? Um, yes. I read the first chapter to her. And, Roy, I'll tell you, she was a-laughing one minute and a-crying the next. Don't doubt it a bit. <laughs> uh, is she going to type it for you? Oh, yes, Dale said she'd be glad to. <clears throat> and I tell you, there ought to be more women in the world, like Dorothy May. Dorothy oh, May? Jonah. Yeah, that's her name, Dorothy May Grant. <laughs> Wears her hair like gold brown with wave after wave. And when she smiles well, at you... Well, never mind that. Mm-hmm. Did you offer to pay her for typing your book? Yes, sir. Yes, I did. And she said she'd do it just for the pleasure of being associated with a literary man. Oh. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Laugh. But there is a darn fine woman. I say, there is a darn fine woman. Wouldn't take a cent. Said if I didn't feel right about it, I could uh, give her some little present, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roy... How much does a console radio cost? Or a moving picture camera? Or a bone china dinner oh, set? Hmm? Oh, she's got him, Roy. She's yeah. got him good. Double convolution. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir, she sure has. Jonah, mm-hmm. either you'd better take up typing yourself or let somebody hold your savings account and trust. It isn't going to last long if you don't. <laughs> Splinters out of the floor. So here we go on Raggedy Ann. 
Get your partners, get out the floor, here we go. Oh, John hands and circle to the south, a little bit of sunshine in your mouth. Little you hope in the grand trail back to the lady in the lead. Hell, a man, you left and right, your partner right and left in a hurry up, boy. You don't be slow and shift your meal and mix your dough and say the heel and pat your toe and meet your partner wall floor. Beat your honey and your patter on the head if you don't like biscuits, eat a cornbread. Hickory log and a popper stump, the whole floor and everybody jump. First couple out to the right with a lady around a lady and a gent so low, and a lady around a gent, and a gent don't go well, swing them in the center with a two fair whirl and a lead them up two and they buckle up four. Change the right hand, a lady for the left hand round, the partner with the right as she comes round with a hickory log and a popper stump, the whole floor and everybody jump. Circle balance, eat for the next and change the rabbit, change the whirl and change that pretty good round whirl. be glad to know that Roy Rogers and Dale Evans have been accorded a very important national honor. And here is Mr. Paul Manning, Hollywood editor of Exhibitor Magazine, to tell you about it. As representative of Exhibitor Magazine, it is a privilege to present to you, Roy and Dale, the Laurel Award in recognition of your selection as Hollywood's outstanding husband and wife ambassadors of the year. This award the first of its kind in motion picture and radio history, comes to you from thousands of film exhibitors who believe that your way of life, your interest in youth, and your faith in the future exemplify the highest type of Americanism. With it go exhibitors' best wishes for continued health, happiness, and success. As they say in your Golden West, happy trails. It makes me very happy to accept this award. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Howard McNear, Charlie Smith, and Martha Shaw. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serial. Happy Friday. the clouds if we're together. Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails.